Today on the channel, we're gonna learn how to play Why Can't This Be Love by Van Halen. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to learn how to play Why Can't This Be Love by Van Halen. One of my favorite songs off 5150. Yeah, it's a keyboard song, but man, this song reminds me of summer. I love the Van Hagar catalog just as much as I love the uh, David Lee Roth catalog. So we're going to check this song out today. There's a lot of cool guitar parts in this uh, interlude during the guitar solo section. And uh, it's really a great example of Eddie's songwriting and structure. So let's take a look at it. This song is in the key of C major, but it modulates to uh, D minor during the verse. So the, the chorus is in C major and the verse is in uh, D minor. And it's got some really interesting transitional chords that bring us between uh, back and forth between the two keys. So uh, let's check it out. So the beginning of the song starts off with the, the keyboard part that sounds like a Sort of like a helicopter going. Okay, so all that is is the song, the structure of this chorus is C, like a C major, an A minor, then a F major, and a G. That's a classic rock pattern. That's a you know, a major one chord, a minor six, a major four, and a major five. 4,000 songs have been written in that chord structure since probably 2015, right? So it's by the last seven, eight years. Since the beginning of, of rock and roll, that chord progression has probably been used two million times. <laughs> anyway, uh, not putting down Van Halen, that's a great chord progression, but the interesting part comes when it goes to the verse, he modulates, and he's got some really neat stuff in there. So anyway, that, that keyboard part in the beginning does that um, little... <laughs> kind of plays around that C, A minor, the C with a leading tone, and then, then E to F, and then to the G. You don't have to play that, but just figure out, add that into this lesson, um, if you have a bass player that wants to thump on that. And then the, the melody part, where he's, uh, when the song finally kicks in, uh, the melody part goes okay and then when it when it ends before the uh, verse comes in something like that so that it's going to end on an a minor before it modulates to the D minor in the verse, okay? So during the beginning part where it's going, that's over a C, and then it keeps going, which is over, and then he hits an F. second time he resolves on the A minor and then Sammy comes in whoa here it comes okay so the verse part's going to be a D minor to an A minor G E minor so we got D minor to an A minor then an F major, G major, then an E minor. So then the second verse. And he keeps it on an A minor. And then he goes to a B flat. No, I can't recall. Now this is the interesting part where he's going to modulate back to the 
he's got to get back to that C, A minor, F, G part, right? We're in D minor, and we got to modulate back down a whole step. So Eddie's got these cool chords in here. He's going to go B flat, F, so it goes, no, I can't recall, F, anything at all, E flat major, oh, baby, this blows him all the way up to the G. So he goes B flat, F. E flat, dun, 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 F to G, dun, dun. and the reason that works so well is he goes back up to a G, which is a five of the C, so that five wants to go to a C, so Eddie's got to somehow bring this, this D minor progression into like a, a bridge or a pre-chorus part. He switches keys to this B flat, F, E flat, F, G. And when he hits that, that G, our ears think of it as a five chord. So we can go back to. Second verse, he goes back into D minor. Now live, what Eddie does is you'll hear you'll hear just Eddie go. Sometimes he'll play like the full A, some A main, A minor. Sometimes he'll just play the the power A minor, and then power F, E. So that's the entire song right there, except for the little breakdown. Now the breakdown part, um, it's interesting to watch on Live Without a Net and some of the footage before they used MIDI tracks and backing keyboard tracks. When Eddie played the keyboard part, Sammy Hagar would play the guitar solo part over the keyboard solo part. And it's, it's fun to watch Sammy do this. Uh, and it sounds good on Live Without a Net. Sammy really does a, a remarkable job playing this. And I believe on the Tokyo, uh, live in Tokyo, 89, uh, OU812 uh, video, I believe it shows him doing this as well. But uh, what we're going to be doing on the uh, guitar solo, there's a there's a melody part, then there's a little chordal thing that's kind of slippery and slidey, then it repeats this melody part. So think of it like this. There's the melody part that opens it and it closes it, and it's sandwich, the sandwich of it is going to be this little slippery chord thing. And it sounds really difficult on the album, but it's Really, the only difficult part about it is remembering the rhythm part. The rhythm section um, or the timing is is a little bit different. But once you get that timing down, hopefully I'll get that down in the lesson. Uh, once you get the timing down, the the performance of it isn't so bad. All right. So uh, let me start by uh, doing this melodic part. Okay. So we're gonna play this melody part. I'll I'll play it for you. Then I'll show you the tablature. <laughs> So what he's doing there is he's going to be outlining an F to a G major to an A minor, believe it or not. So it's going, so it's like. That's pretty much the chords he's going. But we're going to be arpeggiating. We're arpeggiating those chords up here. So we're going to be taking a piece of the F major chord, which is the G string on the third, uh, 14th fret, which is an A, and then the D string on the 15th fret, which is an F. 
So there's your F, F major triad, F and A. So, and then we're gonna slide up two frets, and that's the G major, so it's, and there's your A minor, so it's gonna be on the, the uh, 17th and, and 19th. So, and that, that A minor goes, and then we're gonna go back down to this G. Kind of resolves to a C. So. I guess that's what he's doing. So that last part, that G major triad on the 16th, 17th. And I'm hitting that G string on the uh, 17th fret, all right, which is a C. All right, so. Now that's what I'm talking about on the rhythm. That last time I hear him going, we're gonna do this whole arpeggio. That's a C major arpeggio. here on 19, 17, 16, 15. And then he does an octave, the same thing, an octave lower. So we start on the 12, 10, 9, 7. Or 12, 10, 9, 7, yeah. So one more time slowly. Okay, so that does that in the beginning of the solo, and it does that same thing at the very end. In the middle part, it's got this part that goes. <laughs> so what we're doing there is we're gonna be on the 13th fret and the 15th fret on the B and the G string. And it's going to be just these two strings together, like that. And then we're going to go, which is the, the B and the E high E. So we're on the high E on the 13th and the B on the 14th. Go up two frets to the 15th, 16th. So it's one more time. And we're going to slide down two frets and go 11, 13. So what he's doing there is he slides. It sounds like he's playing with his trans trem in this guitar solo. I guarantee he's got his trans trem Steinberger. He probably bends his whammy bar down. So what we do there is we go like that. So we're doing this. So what he's doing there is he's going one more time. Then we're gonna go, in which I'm back up here on the E and the B on the 13 and 14 twice, and then the 15th fret on the B and the G string. So from the very beginning it goes. Then you go, just like the beginning, little slide action. And then he goes, okay, which is the 13th fret. Three bends, a full step up, and then we go back to, like the beginning, and then we go, So when we go slide up to the 15th fret on the G string and then 
kind of slide down to the 13, 11, and 10. He does like a little whammy bar dip. Like that. So very beginning of that solo. Guess what? It goes back to. Woo! All right, so there you go. It's Why Can't This Be Love by Van Halen off 5150. I hope this lesson was helpful, that you enjoyed the lesson and uh, you got something out of it. If you did, please consider subscribing. Even if you didn't, <laughs> please consider subscribing. Comment below and as always, have a great day. Peace out.